there are so many discoveries that Hubble has made, some that we knew we would make, you know, such as measuring the, ex the speed of the expansion of the universe, uh, verifying the existence of black holes, and then there are some that were completely unexpected. Uh, in fact, uh, my favorite, I think, is one that when Hubble was launched, we didn't know about any extrasolar planets. So my favorite Hubble discovery, if you will, is the measurement of the atmosphere of a planet around a nearby star that was made by the STIS instrument. I think it uh, really you know, boggles the mind or stimulates the imagination to think you know, that here on Earth, with a telescope in orbit, we can actually spy on other planets and other solar systems. Hello and welcome to the Hubblecast. How do we know if a scientific discovery is really important or somehow special? Well, when astronomers obtain a result, they usually write it up in an article for a scientific journal. And one way to know whether the result is important or not is to look at how often other astronomers refer to this article in their work. That's a simple answer anyway. But there's a human component too. Some discoveries simply capture our imagination more than others. And that too is an important part of what makes a truly great discovery. In this episode, we're going to talk to some of the leading astronomers that use the Hubble Space Telescope. And we're going to ask them about their favorite Hubble moments. My, my favorite Hubble discovery, of course, is one of my own. And it was a surprise that should not have been a surprise. When we first looked at the Orion Nebula, this region of nearby region of star formation, we found that we could actually see protoplanetary disk around many of the stars. Now, we should have expected to see this. We should have been looking for it, but we were looking for something else and found that. It was a wonderful feeling to discover the proto protoplanetary disk. It was the, the closest thing to a eureka moment that I have ever had in science. You look at the image and then suddenly you, everything comes together. You know exactly what you've seen and you're seeing something that no one else had ever seen before. It was wonderful. I've done a lot of research with Hubble, and in fact, almost all of my work has been done or based on Hubble images. Um, but perhaps my very favorite was this one galaxy that we observed very, very early on, NGC 4261. And what we saw when we looked at this galaxy was that um, there is a very small disk of gas and dust at the center, and then we could use the velocity of the gas in the disk to measure the mass of the central supermassive black hole, and that was one of the very first conclusive evidence for the presence of a black hole in a galaxy. I think my favorite Hubble discovery is based on aesthetics, and it's the imaging of these giant clusters of galaxies that show these beautiful gravitational lenses, the, the red cluster galaxies and the blue background galaxies, general relativity and action there, bending light and making images that are just stunning. I wish I had done that. Actually, early on, we weren't even certain that Hubble was going to be able to see distant galaxies. When Hubble was first being designed, um, the thought was that as you look farther and farther back in time, farther and farther out in the universe, galaxies would become just fainter, low, what are called low surface brightness, just sort of faint, diffuse blobs, and, and you wouldn't be able to see them very well with Hubble. Uh, in fact, galaxies aren't just faint, diffuse blobs. They have a lot of structure and, and a lot of regions within them that are bright, you know, because of stars being born uh, right there. And so, it has been not only possible with Hubble to directly detect very distant galaxies, but now we're, we've actually seen objects that emitted their light when the universe was only seven or eight hundred million years old. 
And of course, the, the universe today is 13.7 billion years old. So we're looking back into the early nursery of, of our universe and, and seeing the, the toddler galaxies as they're just coming along and starting to grow. I tend to favor uh, the wonderful images that I've allowed to uh, obtain very tight and deep color magnitude diagrams, uh, see how stars form and evolve in nearby galaxies. I think the beautiful pictures of the dust clouds uh, that are on everyone's desk are so amazingly beautiful uh, that they say, well, can we have some more? And so, um, as a scientist, I look at that cloud and I say, that cloud's beautiful, but it's hiding what I want to know about. So inside that cloud are stars that have been born recently, or stars maybe about to be born, and uh, it tells us right away that we need to use infrared to see inside those clouds. So that's the, sort of the, the thing that I think about the most from the Hubble. I did some work on a fantastic young star-forming region called NGC 346, which has beautiful images of it. And being able to look at how young stars are born and how they influence their um, molecular clouds around them, and just to see the fantastic structure in the H2 regions is, is great. I mean, I, can, I just spend you know, so much time looking at these images, and I never tire of them, because you always learn something every time you, you look at them. So clearly, Hubble has made a lot of fantastic observations of the universe during its lifetime. And I, for one, find it really hard to pick what my favorite Hubble moment is. So one of my favorite Hubble achievements were the images that Hubble took of the planet Formelhort B. These were the first images of an extrasolar planet that were taken in optical light. And by using multiple observations, Hubble allowed us to actually watch this planet move on its orbit around its parent star. So another great Hubble moment were the images that it took of this so-called bullet cluster. These are actually two colliding clusters of galaxies that demonstrate beautifully the existence of dark matter. And then of course, the Hubble Space Telescope measured the so-called Hubble constant, which is the expansion speed of the universe. Hubble did this more precisely than was ever done before, and of course, this was one of the main reasons why Hubble was built in the first place. This is Dr. J, signing off for the Hubblecast. Once again, nature has surprised us beyond our wildest imagination. Now that you've caught up with Hubble, make sure to get the latest from the ground too. The ESOcast highlights the best of the European Southern Observatory and its powerful telescopes that observe from high in the Chilean Andes at the Southern Hemisphere's best-known sites for astronomical observations.